This is your daily market recap for Tuesday, March 29th, 2022. Let's go. This is Dan Max at EXP Realty, aka the trading agent, and this is my stock, Bitcoin, gold, and silver daily market recaps. Please subscribe if you like what you see. Thank you. This is Dan Max at EXP Realty, aka the trading agent, and this is your daily market recap for Tuesday, March 29th, 2022. First things first, Discord room, if you're not a member, link is in the description below. Please hit pause now. Check out this back to basics video. I'm going to highlight it in this video. It'll be in the top right corner. I promise you it is well worth watching. And the reason why I'm saying it's worth watching is now we're going into the last three and the first three trading days of the month and the quarter. Way more important. There's fun flows. There's all sorts of things that go on in games that happen during the end of the quarter and the start of the quarter. End of the quarter, there's lock-in or there's markup. In the start of the quarter, there's new money and fun flows and people putting money into their 401ks and it all comes flowing in. And so... Just be aware that it's not going to be simple. And so, again, as I <clears throat> said in the previous take on this video, put on your seatbelt, strap in, grab a coffee, and let's get into it because this is not going to be a short video because there's a lot to talk about. Certain things we've been right about, certain things we've been wrong about. Let's get into what to do next because that's always the most important question, right? Bitcoin, congratulations. Said over 45,000. It's bullish. Well, over 45,000 you've taken out the swing area high you're into the VAP zone congratulations bulls I don't really know what else is to say other than just stay over 45,000 if if it can 50,000 is in your future good job bulls if that's your uh, if that's your uh, choice of risk appetite at this point <clears throat> TLT all right SM or uh, let me I'll just call you Scott whatever a tag name on discord room good friend of mine we were talking about if uh tlt closes below 130 by the end of the month him and i will split a pair of socks and eat them and that was a metaphor for a joke that we're pretty confident that's not going to happen today was a confidence builder we got over the eight day in green let me make sure it's the yeah eight day because my computers are different <clears throat> the eight day and i think this is the 10 day let me uh what, what studies oh no that's the v v wap we're uh i can't remember again it doesn't matter i don't trade on these computers i do not make decisions on this thing this is for videotaping only videotaping man how old am i uh yeah holding up get holding over the eight day i anticipate again based on the monthly based on the previous action the trend is over to the downside potentially keep in mind yield curve is inverting something is cooking bond market this little little guy right here wasn't a this was a precursor to future pain for bears just keep that in mind you don't see that near the lows without more bullishness typically just like sometimes you see at the highs you see a big sell signal but it still goes a little higher and what typically follows market maker was using action to do what they need to do which is they make money and the suckers lose the dollar make you holler all right, I guess Ukraine, Russia, <clears throat> stalemate, whatever. I, at this point, it's not getting worse. That's the good news. The bad news is we don't know what is going to happen next. And so the market's just kind of ignoring it. The dollar today sold off, held our little channel back up to the 20-day. What do we say every day? As long as the dollar holds stable, volatility it doesn't really matter too much let me sip some coffee because it is coffee time if you are watching this video go hit pause grab a cup of coffee and come back and watch this this is a vix holy vix termination now at this point we said 200 day also was it possible that we could come back let me get this trend light out here that's not that's not legit i so said could it come back down in the low teens holy testicle tuesday i and again i mean you you expect when uh the vix implodes it's normal it gets some bounces you get some bounces you had one bounce i mean you went from 37 to 18 and if you think this is a normal vix move i don't know what to tell you because this isn't like this is the equivalent to the apple up move i mean red candle every single day something's going on the market's smarter than you and i let's just keep let's just one again is this an end of quarter phenomenon which means are the losers being sold and the winners being pressed higher because that's what people do to get stuff on their statements because when you get your quarterly statement from 
TD Ameritrade, Chase, whatever, whoever your broker is who owns your 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 holdings. You say you have a money managed by somebody or a mutual fund and you look at their holdings. Don't be surprised when you see the date that they purchase certain stocks. It happens to be near end of quarters and end of months. Or if you see the registry for with their uh, their actual transactions that they sell at the end of the quarter and the month. That is called window dressing markup. There's a whole video again. Talked about it. Hopefully you already watched it. So you're at this point going, yeah, Dan, we get it. Spy. <clears throat> I took a trade today. Sold some out of the money calls. Now, here are the possibilities. Let's get into it because now it's getting dirty. And when I say dirty, like this action is not sustainable. However, it can continue on. We are over the 618. Where's my point seven six seven eight six? You silly trends. Here, I'll show you how QCharts does this. It's pretty slick. I can just change this to activate it. Point seven eight six. That's another fibby. And you put the seven five if I near want to. Not there. <clears throat> All right, we got room. I'm at the point though. This feels like a bull bear market rally. Now again, we saw this slightly in October. This is remember, remember it went stupid before it dumped. This feels stupid again. Like this action is not sustainable. Like I tell people, straight line moves. I mean, just like when we were in in January, it's like the bears uh, checking in. Bears, this is not going to end going down to the the dirt. It's going to bounce first. Well, here you are with the spies, bulls. Could this be a novice gap? Leading to an island floating reversal, leading to lower. I don't know. But I will say this. If you are bullish, please take profits, layer out, sell cover calls, do what you need to do. If you are bearish, be smart. You don't know where the highs are. Again, picking tops, bottoms is incredibly difficult. We talk about that constantly. At this point, I sold out of the money calls because I figured... We could have more upside, just like I did with A&D, and we'll get into that selling because I don't know. Again, the, the famous Livermore quote is, you don't know it until you bet. Take a minute to think about that for a second. Everything looks right when you get into a trade. No one makes a trade to be wrong. However, you don't know until you bet, and that's the goal here is to figure out we're right or wrong. At this point, we said this blue area, Gapped up. Keep in mind, gaps, big gaps typically are at the highs, not the lows. You know, gap, and then it turned around. Oh, sorry, text. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, gap at the high, then failed. Gapped at the high, failed. Again, here was a gap. Gap down, turned around. I always tell people, you have to be careful. You have to be careful with this because ultimately, these gaps create, oh, sorry, uh, create what I would call dislocations that ultimately lead to bull and bear traps. Because again, if this isn't a bull trap, that's fine. But ultimately, it probably will be. And what is it doing? It's pulling in the bulls. A little better volume. But at this point, keep in mind. 786, 465, that's why four, I sold calls in this area. I don't think it, if it goes up there in a straight line, that's going to be, to me, more likely a sell. But we'll get into more of the, I guess, man, I guess we really need to do it. We need to check out the weeklies because at this point we're getting into levels where I'm not going to say it for sure, <clears throat> but I think you can see if the market is going to top, it's either going to be some sort of head and shoulders complex because again, I'm, if, the, if we're seeing a uh, negative uh, yield curve inversion, a bear market, or a, I guess not guaranteed a bear market, but a recession is coming. So it's either a head and shoulders complex, or it's going to be a double top. At that point, know your risk, know your reward. Please be careful shorting. It's much easier to buy dips and buy and go long. Sorry for the long you know, talk on that, but that, I just feel like I have to re rehash that because I think a lot of people... In their brain, I think shorting is easy. No, nope, shorting's not. It is not easy. It's not the thing to bet on forever because shorting, once in having a blue moon, it pays a ton of money. Most times than not, there's some nice trades to be had, but there's no guarantee that every down move is the start of a bear market. And that's what it equates to. What are the odds? We'll see. 
QQQ, 100, 200 day, slamma, jamma. Talked about that was always possible. Keep in mind, speaking of head and shoulders complexes, I'm going to clean up this chart <clears throat> on the fly for the fam. The shoulder line, if you drag it across, you can see it. It's, you know, we're getting close. How close? Could it go to 380s? This market is getting pumped. I mean, the... I mean, the gamma action and all the options pressing that's getting bid up with low volume, I mean, it presses the price up. How much higher? I don't know, but trash to me is floating. When trash is rising, again, like I don't want to pull up GameStop and AMC, but if you own those two stocks and you're owning them for the long run, good luck. When these things go from like 90, this thing was doubled, AMC is up at least a double, I mean, that's not leadership, guys. That's just meme stock bullshit. I'm sorry. And people who take it like, oh, those stocks are, you don't own them. Like, yeah, because they're worth zero in my mind, but they also could be a short squeeze. I don't like to gamble on money like that. You know, I just safe, safe money is easier. I don't like that. I don't like losing it all if I'm wrong. At this point in the queues, again, you can see the little head and shoulder potential. Keep in mind, this is the first time at this point, you know, Notice here, when we went down to the 100-day below it, and we tested it, the 20-day was flat. 20-day is curling down. We've not seen a curling down 20-day since this move, which ended up going a little higher than chopping out. I don't know if the bull market's done. If you look at the market cap to GDP, you look at all the things Warren Buffett does to um, value the market, let's just say we blew out the dot-com bubble records for every valuation of the market. But that doesn't mean it can't go higher, or it can't, or it's gonna just go to zero. Keep that in mind. There's your upside in the queue. Let's roll it. Let's roll through it. IWM getting up to the hundred day. Remember, I was saying this was lagging. Congratulations, it gapped up. Now again, is this a professional gap or a novice gap? Is this one of these gaps that starts? Like, is it one of these that gaps up one more day and then leads to lower lows? Or is it a gap like here near the bottom to go higher? This is why trading so hard. They are repeating formations, but at least you know at this point, there's not, you should know very quickly whether you're right or wrong. And if you get trapped or if you're wrong, keep in mind, you can always get back in. Take your profits, take your losses, take your wounds. Do not let your bullets, your your military, whatever, like think this is a battle. And like, if you fire off all your bullets or, no, or you lose all your men in battle, you can't win wars later. Sip on that coffee and keep, keep, keep dialed in. 100 day at this point, this has got to be the line in the sand for the bulls. It's also coming into, let me just draw this line. I think you'll see it very clearly. There's an area, like there's a, there's a, there's support and resistance here. And you could, let me just, let me steal this thing. Get, get over here. Now you can see it. You can see this area was the bottoms. Now is it tops? Very simple. Get over this. Get over 213, 215, be safe. Bullish. Can't bearish, should fail. GLD. Talked about taking profits in this stuff the last couple weeks. Hope you listen. Talked about the trend line breaking. However, how, how awesome was it today? Hit the 50-day and bounce perfectly. Now, again, did I do anything? Nope. Not at this point. End of quarter, I think there could be some buying. What I would be looking for is a retest. People say, oh, what are the odds it's going to retest? Um, end of quarter? I mean, I remember last end of quarter in January, had that pop, and then he came right back the first couple days later, and then we went up, and then even later, I mean, again, I don't want to pick the first bottom here because this looks like the first bottom to me. Let's be honest. My gold friends, you guys, the people on you know that know me well are talking. What do you see here? You see a gap. And at this point, do all gaps fill? No. But you know what? If the gap does fill, ah, you will be there and aware because you will have in your brain GLD175 alert. I'm writing this and slapping it on your forehead for you. <clears throat> That's what I'd be doing, watching. Silver, great. It held the 200-day today in blue. Uh, SJ was talking about that. I mean, look at that action. That's awesome. I, 
That's what you want to see. We talked about, you know, this circle was already drawn for a reason. Love it. Absolutely love it. However, I'm going to wait for a dip. And if you bought it today and it never dips, you are the smarter person than I. However, we've been covering calling, liquidating, taking profits and metals, not because we ultimately think they're going long-term lower, just because the trend is our friend. As things go higher, take take profits, and as things pull back, we start to add back. At this point, if you bought today, you were correct. I did not. Kudos to you guys. Keep in mind, check out the monthly. Again, when in doubt, up. Pull back to support. We're right at this like downtrend. Nothing wrong with it. I mean, people want to say, oh, it looks like it's bearish. Um, You can argue that. But keep in mind, it's been consolidating for almost two years. I would think the consolidation is to go higher, not to go lower. Keep that in mind. How that play out, what date, what hour, what minute silver is ready to go. Do not have a crystal ball. GDX, we talked about the lower highs here, pulling back. I would like to see the zone again. Draw the fibs. Give me some. I'd love to see the 50-day to like curl up and just be, mm. say, first week of Mar April, check me out. Check out this like retest. That would be the tight. That would be the tight uh, spot to check it out. I was going to say something else. I'm like, ooh, this is a family-friendly uh, video. Again, I'd be watching the mid-40s on the GDX. I mean, you could even stretch it down to here because look at all the um, confluence of moving averages. You know, think about, of, again, when you have a war here and the 50, 200, and the 100 are all together, they're a powerful resistance for the market. Like, everybody sees these. First drop to that area will be absolutely a bounce. Uh, yeah, AEM. <laughs> oh, man, what a roller coaster, right? Gaps down below the 20 day, rips right back up. Can't keep that basketball underwater very long. Um, again, at this point, when you zoom out, you can kind of see why this area is resistance. You had resistance from, I don't know, 65 to 60, just call it. You also have the volume at price zone. A lot of people in this area. Just keep that in mind. I'm not, I'm not holding my breath, waiting for the trend, but I'm also going to wait and just see how everything plays out. Because if I could see this area again i'm I'm gonna stomp it big you should go big go big go home with a stop of course pass same thing talked about this action not a big fan of those kind of hammers at the highs pulling back wait notice all the confluence 25 again i'm giving you these levels not so you can just listen actually set an alarm hit pause write it down whatever you need to do be prepared <laughs> x I feel pretty good about the sells up in the 38s. Covered call stuff, you know, didn't get the exact high. Never do. I, I mean, I wish. But what did we say? The 200 month. I mean, we literally, boink, rejected. Where would I be an absolute buyer? Uh, the no-brainer buy, I don't think it's that monthly chart. I think it's this, between the 0.38 to the 0.5. If you see 28 to 30 handle on X, you hit me up on Discord, you hit me on everything, you go, Dan, should I be buying this? And if I don't respond saying I'm buying this, you don't need my <laughs> you don't need my blessing. I think it's a good deal. I should be. The valet. Same kind of situation. I've been selling because I don't like the action. We're up into this gap fill. And we're making a lower high. Could I be wrong and it ripped the higher prices? That won't not be the first time I was wrong. Keep this in mind. Don't be surprised if this retest. Do not be surprised in retest. Don't be surprised when zones you get up and then you get into big chop zones. This is a big move. I'm not going to lie. 11 to 21 for Valet. Big move. Chop zone. Keep an eye on it. Oh, CF and Mosaic. You see, this is why we don't chase, folks. Big gap down today. Boom. Under the 20 day. It looked like the end of the world. I didn't buy it. It's the first low. First drop. You can see the future. You can see why I'm drawing this because at some point, the 50 day, maybe all of this confluence, you chase this, it blew you out. Same thing. So watch the you know, low 50s. I, I mean, I go watch the videos from a couple weeks ago. I was praying for it. CF, 
same kind of thing. Could you have bought this? Yes, I took the opportunity to look at this morning and made a decision not to buy. It looks like the wrong decision, clearly. I saw it at these levels. Saw 89, 90, not even 91. I was like, uh, nice close. Again, you can't hit every trade. You're going to miss a lot. Just keep an eye on them. Good old tech. Let's get into tech because I am not a fan of it, but it is making me eat words at this point. 125. I sold calls up here. I don't know if it's going to be able to break out of it. Watch the downtrend. Selling calls out of the money. Again, I collected $4.10, I think, for the 225 calls. Uh, yeah, just checking the registry. Boom. You know, that puts me at a cost basis of about, oh, 130, the 100 day. So, I mean, that's kind of where I start losing money in my mind because I don't think it's going to get above it. But again, because I sell calls, I mean, there's got to be a discipline here. You choose your pain tolerance because let's get into Apple. Pain tolerance. Gap over. Gapping over. Oh, man, this is, this is a no doubt end of month bullshit. You know, when... It's one of those things by when you talk about like the VIX getting terminated, like what is it? Come on. Really? 150 to almost 180. This is Apple. What is Apple doing differently? How is Apple making money? Now, this is the question you probably ask yourself. Well, Dan, don't you say that buy the rumor, sell the news? Yeah, clearly something's coming. Or this is just one hell of a markup because as Apple goes, so does the market. Keep that in mind. That's why I didn't add any um really big shorts today in anything. I mean, I, I mean, if Apple's holding up, I can't be taking the short, cannot be jumping on the short train heavy. I mean, you, you just can't. I mean, I took a few cover like naked calls on the spy, and that's it. I just said to myself, if I can't watch it today, I'm not going to get involved. Well, I got involved at the open. Let's get in. I'll just show you on the spy real quick. Check out the 10 minute. Actually, I feel like, hold on, that chart is correct. I updated it. We got up here in these dojis. I said, uh, I'll take it in the 1461s. It tried to fail on the spy. And sorry, this candle. What am I doing? I'm like, man, let me sip on this coffee. I thought this candle was a bearish signal, which ultimately it was. I mean, I got up in like the 461, like low area, like right in here. Cause I saw this wick and I was like, Ooh, this is ugly. But guess what? By the end of the day, all invalidated. Now keep in mind, look at the end of the day. Now, some people are asking about this. Look at this. A lot of dojis, a lot of indecision, big volume. Someone is being fed stock. Same thing with Apple. The last hour, the last 10 minutes, somebody was getting fed Apple stock. They didn't know it. Because again, if you don't watch the volume, you didn't see this. Look at this action. Big, 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 big volume to end the day. Price action was tight. So, of course, the market maker had a plethora of chasers. But they dumped how many shares? What, like, how many zeros is that? I mean, 11, 12, 12 million, 12, 12 million shares. Or is that billions? Jesus. 12 million shares all at once for the most part, in the last 10 minutes. Somebody was unloading. Just keep that in mind. Now, that doesn't mean, and that's why I'm talking like island floating reversal that takes days. This is a novice gap. This is like the novice gap that could be like this, and then you chop, go island. <laughs> novice gaps, keep in mind. Here's a, here's a novice gap. Went a little higher and <laughs> came back. Keep in mind, these novice gaps. Novice gap at the lows, flipped around. Please study the vid, the channel. Go to the channel, playlist, whatever. Check out novice versus professional gaps. Here is a professional gap to start a trend. That is a novice gap. This was a novice gap. That was a professional gap that went up. I mean, again, it only went up for three days, but if you do the math, 165 up to 180, I mean, that's 15 points. It came back because ultimately the market was not healthy. You see them everywhere. They don't necessarily, I mean, and again, you can see a gap like this and you're just like, well, is that the end of the trend? No, not always. Just be aware. I mean, you have to think of like a scorecard and the variables are lining up and they're more and more bearish, but it doesn't mean it's bearish. 
Well, Dan, well, how does that make sense? Well, that's the probability game. If your mindset is trying to figure out things with 100% certainty, I will warn you that there's no certainty in trading. Please, don't be like that. Let's get into uh, more of the tech names real quick, and then we'll try to wrap this up. MicroStrategy. Again, what do we say? Bitcoin's going higher. This is going higher. Thought maybe the 100 day, and you got pretty close. You're almost there. Congrats. I mean, we talked about this nice trend that was holding up. Pretty simple. Uh, Roblox. Yeah. A trading legend in the sense of the volatility. Holding the 20 day. Compressing. I have a confession to make. Ultimately, I would like to buy this again. I don't own it, so I am the worst person to ask about it. Other than I will wait for dips because I just don't chase. But that's my that's my confessional right there. I really want to buy it. Uh, Tesla. Tesla, where are you? Man, I added so many names. Because we're going to have some bonuses at the end. Keep in mind. Bonus. Amazon, Google, Microsoft. Uh, yeah. Gap up. Novice or professional? Indecision day. Rut row, raggy. Rut row. Again, could you get up to 1150? Yeah, that's the trend. Could it get up to 1200? Yeah, of course. If you see this gap, and then you see the second day do this, it's really simple. Bullish above the high of the day, bearish below. Oh my God, is it really that simple? Yeah, it kind of really is because if it's bearish, you're making lower lows. If it's bullish, it's making higher highs. And if you can't wrap your head around the simplicity of that, and you want to be perfect and just take a guess at like one, you know, at 11, 1190, I can't tell you if that's bullish or bearish at this point. Like, that's just a guess. If you get over it, I can guess with better certainty. If you get below it, I can guess with better certainty. That's how your mind needs to be wired. If it's not, fuck, man, trading is really hard. Why, you know, guessing between spots is painful. Talked about March Madness. March Madness. I guess they took, it's like a flop. You're flopping. There's a Duke flop here. Going nowhere. Could it be wrong, Doji? Markup? I mean, I think 48's coming. Keep that in the, the radar. Put that in your memory bank. EXPI. Yeah, what do we say? Every time it gets down to 22, are you going to give up on it? Are you going to give up at the lows? Because here, the risk is the reward. There it is. Talked about it. Nice. Doji, pop up. Look at this volume down here. Somebody absorbed it and stopped it yesterday, and then we're right back over the high. You get over the 20-day, I'm not calling EXPA, EXPI the trade of the year, but that thing could actually move. Disclosure, I own stock. 20-day, what do we say? UTHR, left-right combo. Left-right combo is, I think there's a video on it, big red, Doji and decision followed by big green. And now again, this can be a bearish formation if it's big green, doji, red. Let's see if we can find one here. Um, trying to, again, this formation isn't very typical. It happens at bottoms and tops, but I'm trying to find one at the highs. You see it more at the lows. Hey, it looks good. Let me go back into the future. Come on, welcome back. I've said 190, I feel like seems very logical. 190s that looks good to me keep that in your mind let's end it on just kidding xop and exxon mobile because we're going to actually do bonuses for google amazon and microsoft and skip to this part if you want or not uh said i feel like this is indecision we took out the lows and popped right back that's hard fucking trading like that's just hard because again you'd say well it's bearish you're below 130 and it's like pop right back and that's where if you day trade you're going to get caught with your pants down a couple times. And at this point, I mean, I still say, I've been saying it a billion times. Here's the top of your potential. If you're not taking profits, don't be surprised when Mr. Market Maker takes them from you. Exxon Mobil. Same thing. This is looking like a head and shoulders top. Nice little bounce back. Eh, whatever. You know, I don't really talk about it because a lot of these stocks are priced too high for most people. I appreciate the volatility in them, but even for me, I mean, I just, you can find just as good as stocks that move at lower prices to leverage it accordingly. Now, do you want to play one option on this or two shares or three or five or whatever you can afford? Nah. Interesting day. Again, we talk about the cues. Danger, 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 danger. The cues gap up and this is your, this is all you got, Amazon. 
Aren't you the leader? Aren't you the freaking leader? Now again, I'm not saying today makes the trend. But we're back up into the range highs. We're absolutely back up at the range highs. Let's see what happens. Should be going higher. Check the daily again. You would think it would have an Apple-like day. <clears throat> Didn't. Google. Same thing. Apple like that. Nope. Eh, indecision doji. Oops. Oh, hold on. Because this is probably where the money's at. 10 minute. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Last hour. For the last 10 minutes. Eh, all sold. Amazon. Remember, people are getting fed Apple. It finished flat. That candle is green, but somebody was getting fed. Another lower high. Microsoft. Mr. Softy. Another indecision, decent volume. Again, not too many anomalies, but here we go. Look, a spinning top, 100 day. You tell me how you want to read it. Because again, ultimately, I have thoughts, and I'll tell you, I think it's, you know, indec I would say it's 50-50, it's actually. Because if you're over the 100 day, that's the key. You could chop. But at this point, I'm going to say very nicely, if you want to short tech, please don't believe it. Don't marry it. I will say, there is the risk is worth the reward. Pull up Apple again. Can it go back up to 190? Whoo, yeah, I mean, I guess I always thought it might possible. 180, sorry, not 190. It's there, could it make a new high? Could it bull trap up here? Yeah, uh-huh. We'll end it on this. this, is a long video. I hope there's a lot here that you can unpack. Take it slow. Again, don't trade if you don't know. This is why videos are what they are. And again, I'll be wrong. You're going to be wrong. But learn from those mistakes. Like, again, I'm short Apple. Uh, in this little area, my cost basis is probably around 172 now. Definitely moved a little bit around and made a little money here on the scalps, as you guys remember from the Discord room. Not enough to uh, uncover this, but I'm also not hugely short. I've got some puts with defined risk. And I'm not all in. Again, I... I, it's just really hard. Again, I would like to see the. I would like to see something like this. And then, all right. On that note, take care. Be safe. Stop by the Discord room. Let me know if you need. Thanks for watching. For more trading knowledge and insight, click on the videos on the right, and also join the Discord room. Link is in the description below. If you have any questions, please stop on by the Discord room and let's chat. Thank you.